Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla. In this video, I want to talk about what I am doing in the gym and in my life to work on my fitness goals. Fitness and health goals, I would say. If you've been watching my videos, you know that 2021 was a pretty rough year for me when it comes to my health. And in case you don't know, I had two surgeries in 2021. I also was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. I was suspected of having Lyme's disease and I had a lot of medication. Obviously I went under anesthesia quite a few times and now I am on medication. Because of these issues, my fitness goals really just had to go into the background. I didn't go to the gym for like three months, maybe a little bit longer than that. I was just taking walks. I was trying to stay healthy as much as possible, but that's really hard when your body is literally attacking itself. So now that I am on medication and I am feeling so much better, I am very, very grateful. And this is something that I am now taking advantage of and making sure, it's something I never want to take for granted again because my health is so important, your health is so important. And because I went through this experience, I know now what I really want from my body and how I want to feel when it comes to my health and fitness. So for the new year and after, you know, once I started feeling better, I knew I wanted to work on a few things when it comes to my health and fitness. And I wanted to share with you how I am doing that. I have loved fitness for a very long time and weightlifting is my preferred choice of working out. And I absolutely love the aesthetics of working out, but that's not the most important thing. So yes, working out, weightlifting does shape my body to get to a point where I really love and appreciate how my body looks. But for me, it's also about just having a healthy body overall, like being more athletic, having a healthy stamina, having more endurance, feeling good, heart health, all the things with that, being strong because you can look a certain way but not be healthy you know when it comes to your muscle strength or just your heart uh just a lot of things you can look really good but all of it together is really important to me the first point i'm going to touch on is my cardiovascular health because i do want to focus on this a little bit more which is why i've been running jogging more often so Ever since it was like mid-December, I have jogged at least two miles every single week. That is my goal. Uh, it's nothing, I don't wanna run long distance. I don't wanna do a marathon or anything of that sort. I just want to jog at least two miles every single week just so I am maintaining my heart health and getting that extra burst of heart pumping throughout the week. As of lately, I've been doing an upper body workout on like my Tuesday, I do an upper body workout and then I will jog a mile on the treadmill. And then the other mile that I jog in the week, I'm usually outside for that, even if it's cold out, which is difficult. But if I don't go outside or if it's raining, I will just end up going down to the treadmill and jogging that second mile. Again, I don't do this for time or anything. I just jog it in whatever amount that I end up getting to a mile and then I'll stop. Sometimes I go a little bit longer if I feel like it, but usually I don't and this makes me feel really good. I know that my heart is working and it's something that's easily sustainable for me. Two miles really isn't that much. It takes me 10 minutes or so to jog a mile, whether I'm inside or outside, and I can definitely spare 10 minutes in my, in my day or 20 minutes total in the week for me to do that. The other thing I wanna work on when it comes to my cardiovascular health is just movement in general. So that is me walking. Uh, I do have a step goal of 10,000 steps per day, but I have not been hitting that whatsoever in January. And the main reason for that is because I don't really like going outside when it's cold. And <laughs> this is gonna be something that will change as the months get warmer. But for now, I've been hitting about 7,000 to 8,000 steps per day just based off of what I do, you know, walking around my job, uh, what I do in the gym, sometimes I'm jogging, sometimes I do go for walks outside in the middle of the day while I'm at work or when I come home. Walking outside is one of my favorite activities to do. I absolutely love it. It's really stress relieving. It's good to get outside. It's good to be in nature, even if it's just like a walk in your neighborhood. But when it's cold, it can be difficult and it just it doesn't sound as fun, but it is something I am gonna be doing more frequently again. This Once the pandemic hit in 2020, I was spending like 
an hour, two hours walking every single day. So I know in 2020, my steps were way up there, but I do wanna start getting back to 10,000 steps a day. That's also gonna help just my body in general, getting the blood flow, stretching your muscles, working your joints, and also my heart health. There are other ways to improve your cardiovascular health, just working out in general, getting your heart pumping. I also have been integrating a Sydney Cummings cardio workout every single week, just one time a week. So I typically do lower body day, upper body day, Sydney Cummings workout, lower body day, upper body day. And actually next week I will be posting a video of a full week of workouts so you can see how all of this looks, but that is what I've been doing. And I always do a cardio and ab circuit from Sydney Cummings because her videos are the best. I find them really challenging in a short span of time. So I get my heart pumping and also work my muscles. The next area of focus is just my strength. And I always loved being a strong, tiny person. I am a very small person. I'm four foot 10 and only like 115 pounds or so. And I've always found a lot of power in being able to squat a pretty heavy amount of weight or deadlift or just you know, doing even shoulder press or bicep curls, but that is not something I'm really focusing on. I don't have a squat goal. I don't have a deadlift goal just because of my health. I don't want to put my body under too much stress and cause any issues. So I used to squat, you know, 175 for reps, but we're not going to focus on that because now I'm barely squatting 115. <laughs> Same with deadlifts, like a conventional deadlift. I had a goal of deadlifting, I believe 205. Right before my health issues started, I actually hit a PR of doing 195 deadlift and I'm nowhere near that now. I don't want to risk it. It's not that important to me as much as it feels so good to be strong and powerful in the gym. That's just not my priority, but I do wanna be strong in other areas and more so focusing on what I would call like the micro muscles. I don't think that's even a thing, but what I would consider the more accessory muscles or accessory movements of your strength. So one area of focus in regards to that for me is my core strength. And that's just because having a strong core overall will help everything else. But of course I do want to just have a flatter tummy, a stronger tummy, more toned tummy. I hate, you know, some people hate that, but that is what I'm going for, but I know that the bulk of that's gonna take place in the kitchen. But I also used to be able to do a lot more when it came to ab workouts. And so I've been working on increasing my strength when it comes to my core. The main exercise I've been focusing on for that are my leg lifts that you guys have seen me do. And I'll put some clips now, but basically I'm just hanging from a bar and I do three sets of 10 leg lifts. And the reason I'm doing this is just so I can increase, that's what I'm doing for now. So I'll probably increase this into the future, but for now I'm still struggling with that a little bit. It's only been a few weeks of me doing that every week, twice a week. So I do three sets of 10 leg lifts every single leg day. I find this to be a pretty challenging core workout. And in the past I was able to do sets of 30. So I was doing 30 in a row, no problem. So I do really want to get that back. And I find that it's kind of like a total body workout because you're incorporating your upper body, your core a lot, as well as your legs. And then aside from that, I'll train my abs on like the day with, when I do the Sydney Cummings workout, it's usually cardio and abs, as I said before. And then sometimes if I do that second jog and I'm only jogging, I'll end up doing a core workout, but it's not something that's set in stone for me. The second area that I'm working on in regards to strength is my grip strength. Now, I don't really know why I want to work on my grip strength. I just do because there's so many things that I guess I do know why, because when you improve your grip strength, you improve everything else. It will allow you to lift more weight. It will allow you to lift yourself and just have a stronger body overall. I've been working on my grip strength in a few ways, but there's also other ways to do this. So the first thing are dead hangs. So you literally just go to a bar and hang your body weight. And it's actually quite challenging. And when I first tried doing this, uh, again in December, I barely was able to hang for 10 seconds and now I can hang for like 45 seconds. So for me, it was like quick progress. Another way I've been increasing my grip strength is just by holding weight. So I won't just hold weight. That's not, I don't really care to do that. You could do like a farmer's walk with heavy weight. But in particular, I've been switching from using 
dumbbells for some exercises to kettlebells. The, the kettlebells that I have in my gym are very thick. Uh, so I have very small hands. So when I'm holding something that's larger, that is working on my grip strength while I do my Bulgarian split squats, for example, or my walking lunges, something that requires me to hold them while I'm doing something else. And that's going to just naturally help your grip strength. Like I said, you could just walk around with dumbbells. Doing heavy deadlifts is going to help your grip strength. Um, doing pull-ups is going to help your grip strength. That's something else I'm working on. I'll get to that in a second, but I just want to have a stronger grip overall so I can lift more weight and do my pull-ups, do my hangs just to be strong overall. And as I just said, I am working on my pull-ups. So I used to be able to do at least 10 pull-ups in a row. Well, I guess they're more so chin up. So I prefer them like this. I've always struggled with wide grip pull-ups, but now I can't even do uh, at least at the begin beginning of the year, I couldn't even do a single pull-up, which I used to be able to. So I want to get that back. And that's what I'm gonna focus on rather than wide grip pull-ups, we'll get to that. My goal for 2022 is to get to 10 pull-ups unassisted. Lately, I have been doing assisted pull-ups with resistance bands. So I have some clips of me doing that. And I find that this is helping me to get stronger and stronger each time I do these. So every upper body day, I am doing assisted pull-ups, at least 15 of them. I find pull-ups to be one of the most painful and difficult and annoying exercises. So this is something I really have to push through because I want to be, have that strength again to do them on my own. Pull-ups require a lot of arm strength, but also core strength, chest strength even. Um, that's what I feel anyway, definitely a lot of core strength. And it also gets easier if you lose weight. So that's kind of an area I'm working on too, losing fat in particular. So yeah, working on pull-ups, first by doing the assisted pull-ups every single upper body day, at least 15 of them. And sometimes I'll do them unassisted, but I'm still holding off on that just because it puts a lot of pressure on my body and I just wanna take things a little bit slower. And again, this kind of goes back to the grip strength because the stronger grip strength you have, you're gonna be able to do more pull-ups and have just a stronger uh, forearm and grip to do those pull-ups no matter, no matter which way that you do them. So it all kind of plays together. And then the final area that I'm really working on are my push-ups because for some time I really lost my push-up strength because I wasn't going to the gym very often and I am definitely getting them back. It's been really cool to see the progress in such a short amount of time. So we're only in like the third week of January and I just started doing push-ups again in late December and I can do, you know, over 10 in a row. Eventually I want to get to 20 in a row with good form, you know, on my toes. That would be like the chest type push-up, a typical push-up, but also I don't, I don't know, I call them tricep push-ups where you have your hands like this. I've been practicing these as well. So the way that I'm practicing these is obviously by doing them, but I am doing push-ups and just regular push-ups and tricep push-ups twice a week on those upper body days. So same with the pull-ups. Pull-ups twice a week, push-ups twice a week, both variations. I try to aim for three sets of 10 on the push-ups, but, but sometimes those upper body days are really challenging and getting in a final push-up or like a final five push-ups is, is really difficult. So I'll end up doing a little bit less than the 30 total in the day, but I am doing it at least twice a week. And I've, I've found that it has been helping because now I can do a really good push-up for 10 reps in a row at least. And I've also no been noticing, cause these to me are harder when you're going from this direction. And I've been able to do more of those in a row as well. Weightlifting, like I said, is obviously my favorite, but calisthenics and all of that sort of thing, just, just using your body strength is really fascinating to me. And I think that makes you more athletic and kind of just shapes your body in a better way. So that's why I'm working on all of these things because it's those little things that help the bigger things. So yeah, overall, I just wanna focus on my strength in that aspect. And then the next area, final area, I think is my mobility. So this is stretching and just maintaining my body in the healthiest way possible. So I used to be very flexible because I was a gymnast when I was younger and I have lost the bulk of that flexibility. And last year before I got sick, I did get it all back. So I was able to do my splits again. I was feeling very mobile, stretchable, and then I lost it because I stopped doing it for so long. 
So I am getting back to that. I do stretch my legs for quite a long time, like 15 minutes after every leg day. So that's like Monday and Thursday. And also after I go for a jog because my, my legs are warmed up so I can stretch my body better and get those splits in, get my foam rolling in. It's really gonna benefit my body. And I just feel good overall when I'm you know, that's just a good thing to do. You're gonna prevent injury, you're gonna be more mobile, you're gonna have less pain overall. It helps your joints, helps your bones, etc. So that's a big area of focus for me. I do yoga quite a few times a week and that's something I am, you guys know if you've watched my videos that I'm trying to get back into my morning routine and that's when I do my yoga but I've been struggling with that. So I do wanna get back onto it because it's nice to wake up and work on my stretching and mobility first thing. And then also doing my stretching after a workout. So that's the way I'm working on it now. I know that will come with time and eventually I'm gonna make a stretch with me video once I get to my flexibility goals. This is what I was gonna do last year, but then I, I got sick. So I never got, got around to filming it, but I wanna do a stretch with me so you guys can see my full stretching routine in real time, how long I hold it and you can join along with me. So stay tuned for that. So yeah, you can see overall that I just, I want to be just a more healthy person of course, but more athletic overall have my health not just look good uh, of course along with that i do want to lose body fat i do want to have the body that i want you know be as strong like have my muscles be very prominent that is something that i'm working on just because it's a goal of mine like i want my arms to be defined i want my big quads back and i know that might take time and i may not even get back to the body I had before because I'm not lifting as heavy of weight, but I, the main priority here is just being healthy and maintaining that feeling good in my body and making sure I'm taking care of every single part of it. I did wanna share some supplements that I'm taking that kind of assist with this. And uh, I do take a lot of vitamins and supplements just because uh, I always have like a multivitamin, vitamin D, B12, um, Ome vegan omega-3, et cetera, et cetera. I can put a list down below with links to everything that I use or if you want me to make a separate video on that, I can. I also take a lot more because of my Crohn's disease that other people don't really have to take, but these are more fitness and endurance focused. So the first one that I have been taking, and I actually just started this recently, so I can't say if it's like wonderful or not, but this is really important for me because of my Crohn's disease, because it does come with joint pain. And this is PE Science True Recover joint and recovery. I take two supplements, two, two pills after my workout. It says support muscle recovery and joints. So I'm finding I still do get knee pain here and there even though I am on medication. So I have to be careful and I want to try my best to prevent any sort of arthritic symptoms that I may get from Crohn's disease. I do trust PE Science as a brand so I'm trying this out and I will keep you updated. But so far, so good. The next thing may be controversial to some people, but for me, I don't see a problem with it. It may be cheating to some people, but it's not, that's not how things work. Um, this is not a steroid of any sort, but this is a fat burner. So this is from Live Shredded. This is their stimulant free thermogenic fat burner. They do have one with caffeine. If you want that, this has no caffeine, so I can take it later on in the day. And plus I don't really want to have uh, that much caffeine in a day. So I take one of one of these every morning when I wake up and then I take another one before my workout. I think you can take like four in a day, but I just do the two. I haven't noticed anything significant yet. I've read that you need to be taking it for, I don't know, like 30 to 60 days to see any sort of improvement, but I am giving it a shot. I can link this down below and you can try it if you're interested, but of course do your own research. I'm not a doctor, a nutritionist, etc. This is just what I am doing. I do love my body, but I do also want to get rid of the extra fat that I have, and I know that that is primarily what, based off of what I eat, but for me, I eat pretty low calories and I still struggle with losing that little layer of fat. I think it's because I already have a pretty low fat percentage and I just want to get to a point where I can see some more progress for the effort that I'm putting in. And so I just need a little bit of assistance in addition to my fitness routine and my healthy eating. When it comes to supplements for working out, the only two that I take are creatine and high volume. Neither of these are necessary whatsoever. I think creatine is a good one to take, no matter who you are. Um, I also have seen that this is 
can be very helpful for Crohn's disease, which is why I went back on it. So I mix the two together before I go to my workout. High volume is just a pump, so this isn't necessary. It's just like a stimulant-free pre-workout. And I really just enjoy having that extra, extra bit of oomph to my workout. And you may not notice anything significant from it. I actually only do one scoop and they, show, they say to do two. Um, but it's up to you. You can just try it out. I, I also kind of like just having something flavorful to mix with my creatine. So that's why I do the two together. And so, yeah, it does sometimes create more of a pump. Your veins will, you'll be more vascular. Uh, and I tend to just, I think it's more of a mental thing too. Like you just feel more energized from drinking this or dry scooping it. And I like the taste of them. Again, I trust PE Science, so that's who I go with and they're quite affordable in my opinion. Okay, I feel like that was a lot, but I think I covered everything that I'm really working on for this year. As I keep saying, I just wanna be the healthiest I can be. I never wanna take my health for granted again because I promise you, like, if you have your health, you are so lucky and we are so lucky to be healthy. And you, you know, if you think about whenever you get like a cold or maybe a stomach flu or something and you feel awful, that's how I felt for like all of 2021. So it's to go from that to feeling good. It's like, I love this. You know, I have to take care of my body and do the best that I can and take advantage of every day that I feel good and being active to um, kind of just make up for lost time and just appreciate what I have. With that being said, I'm gonna go on my jog now, my second jog, <laughs> my second one mile jog of the week. If you have any questions, comment them down below. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It really supports my channel and I'll see you in my next video.